Okay, in this last section, we'll do applications. So we can, we wrap it up by doing applications of what we just learned and also of the empirical rule. It's really important to uh, remember that the empirical rule is the beginning of everything, right? It started, the empirical rule came first with these like standardized percentages. And then we kind of went in between. They're like, well, what happens not at one, two, and three standard deviations from the mean, but what happens at 1.1 away to the left or 2.999 away from the right, you know? So um, it kind of just blooms from there. So I go ahead and just start and kind of like with be more fluid with our content. So we just start with kind of what where we left off and then we can revisit the empirical rule in the next example. So let's just say that a wrapper of a certain candy bar lists its weights at 2.13 ounces. So the candy bar is saying, hey, it's 2.13 ounces. Naturally, the weights of the individual bars vary. Um, suppose that the weights of these candy bars vary according to normal distribution. With a mean of 2.2 and a standard deviation of 0 0.04, what proportion of the candy bars weighed less than the advertised weight? So here they're saying weigh less than the advertised weight. Well, what were they advertising on the wrapper? Well, they said the wrapper is 2.13 ounces. So I know the mean, I know the standard deviation, and the advertised weight is um, 2.13, so that's the value of observation. This happens a lot, especially even with drinks and bottles. I have a bottle here, actually. You know, it does say that it is, you know, 33.8 fluid ounces or one liter, but I bet you if I actually poured the liquid out on a scale and put it in a different container, um, it might not be exactly 33.8. I bet you it would be like 33.85 or 33.79, right? It's so close, but it does have that little very, like I said, everything's approximate when it comes to the real world and real life data. So even though it advertises 2.13 ounces, you know, we know that if I took an actual more strict measurement, it might be fluctuating a little. So let's see what purport, because it varies, right? They know the average is 2.2 ounces. There is already, we can see variation. So what's the uh, proportion that weigh less than the average? Like we're looking for the left side now, right? So the steps are always, when you're given an application, is always to find the Z-score. That was always the first part. So the mean is 2.2, the standard deviation is 0 0.04, and the value of observation is that wrapper amount, 2.13. So Z will be equal to 2.13 minus 2.2 all over the standard deviation of 0 0.04. So you'll just go ahead and put this in the calculator as we have been, 2.13 minus 2.2, divided by 0 0.04. And we get a nice clean one, negative 1 1.75. So this is below the average. Step two is always to go ahead, draw and shade, because that will always help us the most. So I draw this, it gets worse as I go along in the chapter. <laughs> and so here we can go ahead and put the mean of 2.2. So where is the observed value 2.13? Is it to the left or to the right? Is it more than or greater than the mean? Well, we know our z-score is negative, so it's below the average. So we'll go ahead and put 2.13 on the left side where it belongs. And it said less than. What does less than look like? What symbol do we use? Right. Less than. Well, less than is pointing to the left. Let me shade to the left here. So we can see that we're looking at a tail. Where's the table value? Always mark the table value. Right. And we know if the table value is from the mean to the observed value, and we know that the lower half is what? That's right, 50% or a half. And this is the table value I know that I could take a half, subtract the table value, right? Here's the half, subtract this, and I get the tail. So this should remind you of one of the, one of the very first scenarios we did with area. 
All right, I have a good idea of what's gonna go on. So now I'm gonna go ahead and look up the table value that corresponds with the z-score of negative 1.75. So I'll go to my table and I go to 1.75. It's all messy from everything we've done in this chapter. So 1.75. So here is the z-score right here, 1.75. So 0.45994, 45994. And then um, now we can go ahead, the last part is let's go ahead and find the proportion of candy. So the proportion wouldn't be percentage, we can just leave it as a decimal. That's all. So we can go ahead and now find the proportion. So the area now will be equal to one half minus the table value. So you can go ahead and put this in the calculator. Something with a six at the end. Minus 0.45994. Point zero four zero zero six. So the proportion of candy bars that weigh less than the wrapper is point zero four zero zero six, right? And as a percentage, you would say about four point zero zero six percent. It's a small percentage, but it's kind of a lot if you think about it, if they make a lot of candy bars. Okay, so continuing with the candy bar example, now what portion of candy weighs between, so there's that key word between, 2.2 and 2.3 ounces. So now I'm gonna have 2.2 and 2.3 ounces, so I have two x values, right? I have my first x value is 2.2, and my second x value is 2.3. And so I'm gonna go ahead and try to find the z-scores, but the mean is still 2.2 and the standard deviation is 0 0.04. So some of you can already see that 2.2 and the mean are the same, and therefore that's where the mean is, so z equals zero. But I'm gonna show you, you know, the little math for it. <laughs> All right, so the first z-score, you'll see that the numerator, because this is the observed value minus the mean, which is 2.2 over 0.04. So notice that these cancel, that's zero, and so this z-score is equal to zero, which makes sense because the first value is the mean itself, so it's just gonna be right there on the mean. The z sub two, though, will be um, 2.3 minus 2.2, so it's gonna be a little different, divided by 0 0.04. So if we just did this in the calculator, we get 2.3 minus 2.2, and then divide that by 0 0.04. So we get 2.5. Great. So if we wanted to draw this, right, draw and shade, we would have the mean be at 2.2, which is the first observed value Right? And 2.3 is a little to the right of it. And so if it's between these two values, then we can see the table value is this area. And so this is great because we hadn't done one of these where wherever our z-score line was the table value, we were always adding the table values or subtracting from a half or adding a half, right? This time, notice that because it's from the mean of 2.2 to the value 2.3, that all we have to do is look up the table value and that will be the proportion. So let's go ahead and um, look up the table value. Look up table value. So the z-score we're going to look up as 2.5 and therefore the table value will be equal to, and let's go ahead and look that up. So 2.5 is down 
and then look uh, five, 2.5, and then just uh, zero would be this column, right? Just 2.5 by itself. So 2.5 would be 0.49379. So let's write that down. The table value would be 0 0.49379. So the last part is to find the area, right? But the area in this case is the table value, as we can see from our picture. So it'll be 0.49379. And so here, um, you can look at it as percentages as 49.379%. So the proportion of candy that weighs between 2.2 and 2.3 is almost half, right, 50%. So they may want to tr change their advertised ounces to probably around two, between 2.2 and 2.3. That's much better than the error that they're getting uh, above, right? Okay. So there, it look, it's the same process. Notice you're always like, you need the z-score, you need to draw table value area, right? It's always those mix of steps, no matter what. The last part of this is now the application of the empirical rules. So here is the Acme Company Widgets, um, I mean, sorry, the Acme Company Manufacturers Widgets. They tell you that it's bell-shaped, Right, so that's good, it's normal distribution, so we can go ahead and use the empirical rule and everything we've been using. And the widget weights have a mean of 51 ounces and a standard deviation of four ounces. Use the empirical rule to answer the following questions. Now, 99.7% we can recall is three standard deviations away, but we're gonna have follow-up questions as well. So let's go ahead and draw that nice, bell curve that we had drawn before in the previous section. So let me go ahead and grab that. And then you'll see that the problem is pretty fast. Okay, so I went ahead and grabbed that empirical rule back in the first section when we discussed it. And the, I took the ones that were break, like the, broke up all the percentages. And this way, that way we can go ahead and just rewrite the x-axis. Remember that with the empirical rule, the percentages never change, just the data does, right? So in our case, now we're dealing with widgets, not peanut butter jars, right? And, um, and so we go ahead and, and let's go ahead and write the mean in that middle, right? So the mean here was 51 and standard deviation of four. So here's the mean of 51 and the standard deviation of four. So one standard deviation away would be 47 to 55, right? I would just add and subtract four, sorry, subtract four here, add four here. Now, why not subtract four one more time and then a third time? Why not add four one more time and then a third time? Let's do the x-axis pretty quickly. So I'll add four, 59, Add another four, 63. Subtract four, 43. Subtract another one, 39. So that's what you should do with these empirical rule problems is draw this curve and split up the percentages and then do um, start with the mean and start adding three times the standard deviation, subtract three times the standard deviation, and now we can answer the questions pretty quickly actually. So 99.7% of widget weights from the empirical rule, we know this is three standard deviations away. Great, let's go look at that. Here is the mean, one, two, three, one, two, three, done. So one, two, three, one, two, three. Between which two weights does 99.7% of the widget weights lie? Well, 39 and 63 ounces. All right, the next question. What percentage of widget weights lie between 43 and 63 ounces? So 43 
and 63 ounces. So now they're not even, it's not symmetrical. So I'm gonna have 43 to 63. So I'm gonna have all these percentages between 43 and 63. I'm not gonna be a hero, I'm just literally going to take each percentage from 43 to 63. Add this plus this plus this plus this plus this. That's all I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna have 13.5 plus 34 plus 34 plus 13.5 plus 2.35. Okay, so we know that it's gonna be 95% plus 2.35, so 97.35%. Now, um, I just noticed that here, two standard deviations is 95%, and I just added that. However, don't even think about it. Just put it in the calculator, you'll get the same exact thing. It's totally do the most easiest transaction possible, right? Um, so as you do more, you're going to get more keen at like, oh, I'm just going to subtract from one and do, you know, all this stuff. So for me, I just say identify the values you're looking at and then determine how you're going to add or subtract or those percentages. The last example says what percentage of the widget weights lie above 47 percent? So above 40, so here's 47. Above means below or, or higher, right? Higher, right? So all the way out. So you're going to add up all these percentages all the way from 47 to the right. So what does this mean? Well, this means you're going to add, if I can put it up a little, there we go, 34 plus 34 plus 13.5 plus 2.35 and then the tail, 0.15. Okay. When you add those all up in the calculator, you will get 84%. However, some of you are like, well, couldn't you just take, um, couldn't you do like 50% plus 34 and get 84? Absolutely. Couldn't you take 100% and subtract these over here? Yeah. So there's a lot of ways you could do it. So let me go ahead and write some other ways. So another way would be to notice that you're taking a half and adding the 34 to it. Sorry, the 50% and then adding the 34%, right? Because half the low the right right half is 50%, right? The other way is knowing that if you have a hundred percent, you can subtract the um point one five percent minus 2.35% and then the other 13.5%. So you can subtract, if you're doing all of this, just take 100% and subtract these three, right? Um, or you can take, know that this is 50% and add the 34, right? So, and then I just did it straight up, you know, I just used, I just added up. So there's a lot of ways you can do it. And the more, again, the more you do it, the more you're gonna like find your own way. But really what it's about is saying, is finding a bunch of information just from the mean and standard deviation. Like I know right now that 99.7% of widgets lie between 39 and 63 ounces. I know 97.35% lie between 43 and 63 ounces. And all the widgets that weigh above 47 ounces is 84%. So I can do a whole bunch in different, combinations of these, right? So the miracle rule is really valuable for quick assessment of your data. Again, my my advice to you with the empirical rule applications, because you'll see these types, is to draw this and then label the x-axis, right, by putting the mean in the middle, add and subtract the standard deviation three times on each side, and then start answering the questions. For the other applications, like all in between, recall, always get the z-score, shade, table value, and then assess the area. Okay.